pretty one, Ulysses. Hello booktube, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with another Friday Reads and I'm just going to kind of check in on what I've got on the go now because it's getting to the end of the month and I I guess I am slipping back into my old custom of wanting to finish up as many books as I start within the month by the end of the month because I so enjoyed that feeling on January 1st of starting a whole swack of new books. It's going to be a little bit uh, different for me in February because I, I think it's on February 1st that Claire of Claire Reads Books and I will be bu starting to buddy read the tome Barkskins by Annie Poole. So that'll take 10 days and maybe I won't be reading very much else during those 10 days other than something on audio maybe. But then February 10th or 11th I'll hope to start a, a swack of new books because it is it's just a feeling of being flooded with a bunch of new literary beginnings and it's just like a Christmas morning kind of feeling for me. So so I am going to try to finish as many of these as I can by the end of January, and if I don't, I don't. First, I want to talk about NetGalley. Many of you know that NetGalley is a online ARC reviewing site where anybody can register and then apply to receive ebook galleys, so NetGalley, of forthcoming books. And if you review them, you build up a profile and kind of a... Uh, point system and they you'll get more books and more books that you request and I have been trying to break through to become recognized as somebody worthy of receiving an galley an ebook galley from net galley for more than a year but I was just reviewing books on Litzy and on Goodreads and then I started a booktube channel and I added that to my profile but I didn't have very many subscribers and so finally in January, once I hit 500 subscribers, I think I requested four books on one day, and I was approved for three of them almost instantaneously. So, I guess 500 is the magic number. One of them is coming out in early February, so I started reading it today. That's one of the two new ones that I have to tell you about today. And it's a translated novel from the Norwegian, published by Archipelago Books, with the very short, sweet title, Love, by Anne Orstavik. And the translator is Martin Aitken. New Year's resolution. Start mentioning translators' names. I've read uh, 10 pages, 15 pages, and I like the translation very much. It, it's really easy to sink into the prose somehow. It's alternating between the single mother's consciousness and the young son. I think it's going to be his ninth birthday the next day, because that's apparently, to the degree that there's any story here, that's the story. A lot of small moments and just alternating between points of his point of view and her point of view, but it's really quite a soothing um, read so far. Like it just you just pulls me right into her and then him. Like just small little details. Like she bought him a pair of slippers that he wears around the house, but he's got a uh, they have uh, clamps on them that if he doesn't clamp them. Like, not a zipper, but like, I think that's the word they used was clamp. And then if he doesn't clamp them up, they make a clinking sound when he walks on the floor. Just those little details that just make it really vivid. So, I have no idea, but starting out good. And that will be my very first net galley. So, of course, I'm going to do a full review here. And the other one that I started, and this I mentioned in the Shithole Countries video, which seems like it may soon be my most viewed video, that's interesting, was a novella that Joss over at Squibbles Reads mentioned, uh, which is probably going to win my award for 2018 for the best book title of the year, Like a Mule Bringing Ice Cream to the Sun, by the Nigerian-American writer Sarah Ladapo Manika. And I started reading it a few days ago, and uh, maybe a little bit disappointed, but still, I'm enjoying it, but the prose is nothing special. Like, it's kind of a shapeless, very plain, like, I feel like I'm reading this, the protagonist is a 75-year-old Nigerian woman living in San Francisco. And she's lovely, but I feel like I'm reading her journal. There are other characters that we go into other characters' points of view, but really it 
the literary quality is of you know reading somebody's journal. It's not really literary enough for my tastes, but I'm I'm enjoying it, and I'll probably finish it today or tomorrow. But it, it's not as well written as I was expecting. The story's interesting, but it's just kind of a story, I think. But that title, <laughs> you can give it an extra star just for the title. And then I'm just going to quickly check in with the books that are in progress. I have not bailed on any new books since I did my bail wrap-up a couple days ago. I did finish the Ocean Wong poetry. And I think that kind of poetry, I think I need to reread it again from start to finish. Maybe more than once before I could try to say anything about it. But it's the best book of poetry I've ever read. And I haven't read very many books of poetry from start to finish. But this is Sean Poetry. Oh my god! So, more on that down down the line but five star read mind blowing stuff that's in progress i have barely read 10 more pages in this i'm i love it but i'm not making time for it so it's i'm neglecting it i hope to read quite a chunk more of it before the month is over but there's no way i'm going to finish it i'm on page 100 and it's 700 pages so no i'm not going to finish this but maybe i'll finish it next month and who cares i'm 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 enjoying it i'm loving it so much it's so rich I haven't made a lot of progress with this one, but I think this is going to end up being my favorite read of the month, or tying, if I finish it this month. It's certainly shaping up at this point to be a five-star read, and nobody knows about this book, so I want to proselytize The Loved Ones by Sonia Chung, of course, tentatively, until I finish it. It's by a Korean-American writer. Nobody knows about her, but as I mentioned before, I first heard about this novel from Liberty on all the books, and then my friend Jenny, who's the host of the Reading Envy podcast, read it and loved it, but those are really the only two people, and there's not much going on with this end. Goodreads, it's a 2016 novel. The prose is fantastic, but it's not, it's not, that's not what is sticking out for me. It's the way that she's building the story and the characters. I'm just feeling so many emotions. It's difficult to create really convincing, deep child characters and these children in this story. So there's a Korean American nanny and she's 15 and she is part time doing, you know, babysitting a mixed race couple. The woman is white and the dad is African American and they have two young children of girl who's maybe nine and the boy who's maybe six and he's a little terror but it's quietly powerful i'm just pulled in so deep so i do hope i can finish this i'm about 60 pages into it so it would be a bit of a stretch but i i aim to finish it soon because i and and it's just so lovely And I mean that in a literary way. This is not just a little, this is not just a story. This is, but there's something really deep, quiet and deep about it that I just... So I'm in no hurry to finish it. Maybe I won't finish it for another month or two. Who cares? But uh, I'm... The fact that I haven't got very far into it is because I love it. Welcome to my world. This one I will finish today or tomorrow. I'm about 80% of the way through it. Alina Bronsky's novel, The Hottest Dishes of the Tartar Cuisine. And she is a Russian-German writer. She writes in German. She was born in Russia. And this is translated from the German by Tim Moore. Published, the translation was 2011. I don't want to say too much about it, but I'm guessing now it's going to be a four-star read unless something goes terribly awry in the last chunk. Fascinating characters. The writing is not what's standing out, although the writing is fine, but the story is so intriguing and the characters very unlikable, but yet there's something compelling in a way that I'm still kind of rooting for everybody and not hating anybody, but they're quite hateful especially the main character, the mother and grandmother character the narrator, but it's fascinating so I'll, I'll do a full review on this one I think So, this is the uh, short story collection. They're linked short stories, so it's kind of a novel in short story form. The Tsar of Love and Techno by Anthony Mara. His novel, A Constellation of Vital Phenomena, was my top read of last year, my second most favorite novel of my whole life. So that's a tough act to follow, and it 
took me a while. I was fascinated intellectually by the stories at first, but it took me maybe uh, 75 pages before I was hooked emotionally, and now I am. I'm really enjoying it. Again, I'm reading it pretty slowly, but intricately layered plot be stitched between... How many stories are there? Again, set in Russia and Chechnya, so a lot of it overlaps in a way with the, the uh, setting for A Constellation of Vital Phenomena, which was a Chechen story. It looks like there's about nine stories and i am uh, on the fourth story so i've got a ways to go i may finish it by the end of the month who cares but i'm really enjoying it yeah it's gonna probably be another five star read so those are the physical books what else have i got here a novel that i heard about on russell's ink and paper blog channel and started within five minutes of hearing him talk about it is after the parade by Lori ostland and i am really liking it a lot i think i can almost say I'm loving it, but I, I need to keep re read some more. The protagonist is a, I don't know how old he is, 30-something? to A 30-something gay man who leaves his long-term relationship and moves to San Francisco. And it's just full of quiet moments and flashbacks where I realized that I'm probably going to love this novel was an extended flashback to his childhood with his violent father and, and put upon mother and they're taking a trip together. And there's some sweet moments and some affectionate moments and then these really disturbingly violent moments. And it's all narrated in a way, the prose, it just flows like water. Thought, oh yeah, this is something special. So once I read that, and it was about 10 page, and a flashback to his childhood, I thought, oh yeah, this is really fine. I'm reading The Roundhouse by Louise Erdrich. This is for Joss's book club over on Scruples Reads, and I am enjoying it a lot. I'm finding it really emotionally compelling, and I find that this is my first Louise Erdrich, and I'm finding the writing very uneven. Some of the writing really sings, and some of it really clunky prose. I would say more is working than not, but I'm a little surprised at how uneven the prose is. For such a famous novelist so i'm certainly turning the pages wanting to find out what happens and end on a really positive note dennis johnson's posthumous collection of short stories the largest of the sea maiden i've now finished the second story on audio the audio narration is phenomenal i think each story is narrated by a different narrator but i didn't look up who they were so they might be famous actors for all i know because the narration just to die for and the stories are amazing so the second story is in the form of letters that a uh, really screwed up an addict guy alcoholic or drug addict uh, he's 33 years old and he's writing to his family and his friends and his primary school sweetheart and satan and god from the treatment center if you describe that story to me i would say i don't want to read that but oh it's so well done his voice his personality, the way it's rendered through all these letters that he sends, many of which obviously he doesn't send, but it's uh, it was an amazing story. I would say that one, and yeah, no, I've got a few potential five-star reads in progress. We'll see how many of them I finish. I will probably finish the Dennis Johnson audiobook this weekend, and then I will have three or four days next week to see how many of the rest I can finish. But the, the bit of a tension between... Uh, I do like to finish books up so I can start fresh, but at the same time, I also don't like to rush books that I'm enjoying. So my January wrap-up may be very short compared to my bail wrap-up the other day. And it has been a bit of a bumpy month reading-wise with all the bails and disappointments, but uh, boy, there's some just fantastic fiction that I'm immersed in at the moment too. So it all works out in the end. What are you reading this weekend? What's up for you, bookwise or otherwise? I look forward to your comments and have a great weekend. Thanks for watching. Oh.